my assigned task today to speak to you about some of the history, Christian history, if you will, from the time of the founding of this movement in the first century to the time of what's called the Great Reformation in the 16th century, and all of that in 40 minutes. It is interesting to think about the fact that gathered here together as we are, Jews and Christians, learning about Jewish things and fellowshipping together, for the vast majority of Christian history, such a meeting would not have been possible as Christians had we fellowshiped with the Jewish people, we were subject to being excommunicated from the church. As Jews, had you come to a meeting like this, you would have been subject to death because you would have been labeled a Judaizer. And it was prohibited for Gentiles to convert to Judaism from the time of Constantine. So we're, we're enjoying actually the freedom that we have today to do something that for the vast majority of uh, our history in the last 2,000 years has not been possible. And that is a bit of good news. The bad news is the reason it's not been possible is because of the actions of the church, not because of the actions of the Jewish people. The very church that has carried the name of Jesus in many ways, regrettably, has profaned that name, dishonored this Jew from Nazareth, and in the process, not only dishonored, disabused, but even put to death his brethren after the flesh, the Jewish people. Now, how how such a thing happened is incomprehensible to me, and I, I, I shall not make any attempt to explain it. I simply want to describe to you some of the things that have happened within a context of understanding Jesus himself. Because if we are coming to a place of resolve to walk together in respect, in understanding, even in cooperation, for that to be authentic and real, it must be preceded by repentance on our part as Christians towards the Jewish people. But for repentance to arise authentically from a change of heart, it requires a change of mind. It requires recognition. So we're going to be sharing today that which may come as a great shock to many of you Christians. That is some of our history. History, as Father Ed Flannery pointed out in his classic book, which I commend to you all, The Anguish of the Jews, is a history that the Jewish people have committed to memory, but it's a history that has been torn from the pages of our Christian history books. And so we as Christians tend to be very ignorant about this. But let's begin with the man himself, whose name we as Christians wish to uh, honor, and the man who's responsible for us even coming into relationship with the God of Israel. I'm speaking of a Jew named Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, from uh, uh, Nazareth. The name Jesus, Yeshua, in the first century was actually a common name, one of the five most common names from all the evidence that exists today. Yeshua was the name, Uh, not Yeshu, which you often find in Jewish literature and sometimes is used in a derogatory manner, but the name Yeshua, which is related to the Hebrew word for salvation, Yeshua. The evidence is quite compelling when you begin examining it that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, most likely born either 4 or 6 BC by our present uh, calendar, was in every respect an authentic, a devout, and an observant Jew. A few years ago, I had the privilege of speaking at an Arab Shabbat service at a synagogue in Dayton, Ohio, where we live. And I began by saying, uh, Uh, could I begin my talk by reciting a prayer? And so I recited a prayer that begins this way. Avinu Shabbat Shemaim Yitkadesh Shimcha 
Tamlich Malchut Cha, Ye Ase Ritzon Cha, Bashamayim Uva Aretz. And I went through the prayer. And at the end, everyone in the uh, synagogue said, Amen. Because it was a it was a Jewish prayer very well known to them and the themes of that prayer very well known sanctifying the name of God praying for God's kingdom to advance <laughs>